Over the course of your life, cars will come and go. Whether you loved or hated them, the memories and nostalgia will survive. I personally have spent more money on vehicles than any other thing. Repairs, maintenance, modifications. And one of the most long lasting things that I've ever done was investing in my own personal driving education or driving ability, be it learning from others, going on the internet, or going and seeking out professional drivers to help me improve what I'm doing. And over the course of time, it's, a, it's given me the ability to basically get behind the wheel of any car, understand it, and appreciate everything that it can do to its fullest. Now, in this video, we take a trip to Bondurant in Arizona to learn from some people that have been in the industry for over 30 years, who've trained celebrities, professional race car drivers, and normal people. And that's what this video is about, trying to teach you how to be safer, the things that they teach people to drive better, faster. But this isn't all about speed. It's about enjoying the drive. So let's get started. I look at the guy that plays the guitar and he doesn't even look at what he's got going on. He's jamming on it. Um, it's just the amount of time that he's invested in that. And to me, that's, that's, my, that's my guitar. That's, that's my musical instrument. And that instrument's different from this one and that one. That's kind of a, you know, the cool thing, being able to go from one car to the next. What is this car really about? And trying to figure that out real fast and get the maximum out of it. My name is Mike McGovern, and uh, I'm the chief instructor for the Bondurant School of High Performance Driving. I have been working for the school, or for Bob, however you want to look at that, for, for 36 years. I've made this my, my career, and I've had the time of my life. I mean, it has absolutely been uh, a fantastic journey. You know, there's been good things and bad things, but it is ultimately a great, great experience for me, and I wouldn't change anything. That, uh, that, has, that has come my way you know, from this opportunity. I'd say if I, I don't think I've ever heard that before coming from somebody that's been in a position for as long as you have. So there must be something extremely magical about this place or the work that you do that makes you feel that way. I think it's both, you know, coming to this environment every day, where, would you, where, where else would you get that? There's maybe only a few places out there um, but this is right down the street from my house. <laughs> okay, then, so that's what it's all about. You don't really care about easy. the place, just, you can walk here. <laughs> but, uh, but no, the, the, what it's all about, the training system that's in place, what we do here, the information that we share with our customers, and, in, and then the customer themselves, you know, the people that come here, um, they come from all over the world to, to come through this driving school because of the reputation that's been established over the last 50 plus years. And, uh, you know, it, uh, that's, that's a big part of it, sharing my passion with other people. And when you sign up for a driving school and you plunk down some serious cash, you get to a place like Bondurant. This is a huge facility. You walk around, you see this open lot for safety testing, the track, the shop, the office area. But the first thing you typically do is you head into the classroom. Let's check that out. Ah, yes, the air conditioning, finally. When you come here, you might be the only person in the room, like me, or it may be filled depending on the time of year. Of course, I'm a doofus. I came here when it's like 115 degrees. But once the instructor comes in, we talked with Rob, and Rob went over some of the basics. So if you're a beginner, or if you just need to build confidence, he's gonna help you with you know, steering position, hand position on the steering wheel, you know, commonly used terms. And then if you're a more experienced driver, as you go on with the classroom sessions over the next couple days, they get into some extremely more detailed things like traction circles. And again, each instructor tailors it around their specific student. 
So the beginning of the ground school, the beginning of everything, the foundation of what we're learning is the visual. It's uh, focus with the vision though. You guys ever pull out your cell phone? I say you guys, <laughs> but you ever pull out your cell phone, you look at the time, put it back in your pocket, realize you have no idea what time it is, right? So I can tell you to look at something, look far ahead, but what am I looking at? What am I supposed to be looking for, right? So the focus with the vision, know what time it is and why am I looking ahead is to give the body information to steer it where you want it, to put it where you want it, is visualizing of where you want the car to be and the body will take over. Hand -eye coordination you've been developing since you're a baby. Underneath that we got vehicle dynamics. That's what we do with the uh, gas pedal, brake pedal, steering wheel. Um, steering wheel, being hands nine and three on the steering wheel, uh, gives you a bigger range of motion. Um, also, uh, if, if um, the airbags were to go off, it blows the hands away, which is gonna be safer. I think in like driver's ed nowadays, they teach them down here at the bottom, which is kind of scary. This is if the airbag were to go off, the hands blow away down in the bottom, uh, but it's all about preventing the airbag from going off, so hands nine and three is more control. It puts you in the middle of that spindle, that way um, the push-pull of the arms is very fluid, very smooth, so that's pretty important as well. Now, how I go through that process is a little bit different. Uh, we teach a hand over hand here at Bonnerant, right? So hand over hand being I never let the arms cross. Before they cross, I take the inside hand and bring it back over to the spoke, that way I can continue that feed. Uh, I can always bring a car back to center, so that's gonna help that situation. Yeah. Um, so, right, yeah. walk me through this, I apologize. So, no, yeah, absolutely. So, so one yeah. hand here. Yeah, so start turning, right? It can now, before you cross, take the inside hand with the bottom All right. and bring it back over to the spoke. Continue to move it with your right hand. So we're right? so here? So you're continuing to move yeah. and then this hand's gonna come here, right back to the spoke. And then you have that range. And like right now, since it's not moving, it does kind of stop. But as the car's moving, it, it's got more range there. So yeah, that's, there's kind of have a hybrid of, of say shuffle steer, steer and hand over hand. You know, when I'm in the middle of the corner, I almost put my hands nine and three in the middle. That way I have a bigger range to control it if I need to, but I always go back to say the hand over hand, right? So think of that as taking it away from everybody that you learn from, right? Whatever works for you. The biggest thing as far as the steering goes is making sure you're looking where you want the car to go. That's always the most important. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you're thinking about the steering, <laughs> yeah, if you're thinking about it, like I don't want you thinking about it, let's get the muscle memory of trusting the eyes first, and then we can work on the steering. Something you could do in your everyday driving, right? So yeah, hand over hand. There's also like say shuffle steer, but there's always a dead spot in there, right? Then I lose track of where center is. I have to let the car tell me where center is, which is too late, right? I need to bring that car back where I want it, right? So never letting go of that steering wheel, always steering it where you want it, okay? That's gonna be that key. The gas pedal, brake pedal, you know, think about all these controls now, more of a weight management tool, not go, stop, or turn. It's managing the weight. If I can think of that car balancing on a needle, I'm managing the weight of that car. Um, as I transfer weight, it's compressing those tires into the ground, expanding that contact patch, giving you more overall control. So <clears throat> that's what I'm thinking about when I'm driving. If I think about it when I leave here, I think about driving like a chauffeur, right? I'm very smooth with all the inputs. I'm not feeling that energy move around, but I'm being very smooth and progressive with that energy. On the racetrack, it's the same thing, just at a higher level. I'm um, underneath that, it's attitude. I think of attitude as more oh, uh, always thinking there's gonna be something new to learn, right? You can always learn something from somebody, uh, but also attitude, I think, is a good one as far as on the outside of a car, race car, it looks very aggressive, very masculine, where in reality, it's just a ballet. We're being very smooth and gentle with those controls, um, and that's how you control that car, right? So think of the attitude as how I think about this a little bit different. Seating position, you're inside the car, I got both hands on the steering wheel, right? The steering wheel is commuting to, communicating to the driver. Okay, we're always looking for that communication. If I turn a certain amount, I expect it to turn a certain amount. If that car is not responding with that certain amount, we usually add a little bit more and that's communication right away. That the, there's something wrong. The car's not responding to my steering input. So us as a driver, our job is to be a little bit more in tune with that communication. Um, that way I sense something going wrong, I can make an adjustment. That smaller adjustment allows me to keep on path much more accurately. Right, so steering, um, turning in, I expect that car, again, to turn. If it's not, there's something going on. Or if it turns in too good, right? I turn that steering wheel, all of a sudden the car responds too good, right? Now there's communication that I'm turning in the rear of the car starting to slide, right? So thinking of that, seat of the pants. What am I feeling inside that car? Make sense? Right, so important that I'm listening to that communication. Our skid car is the best tool on property for those exact things, the visual part and that communication part.
Now with any school or teacher, they're only as good as the tools they provide their students. In the case of Bondurant, they have something called their skid or slide car, which is a V8 Dodge Charger with platforms welded to the front half and the rear half of the car, and they look like training wheels. But what it is, is it, it allows the instructors to raise the front end or lower it, or raise the rear and lower it individually. So when you get out on this open course, you can practice car control without having to worry, oh, am I gonna stuff my own car? Am I gonna get in trouble? No, the instructor can simulate what it's like to go into a front end slide by just simply raising the front tires off the ground. So you have to work on your car control. Same thing with the rear. And what this allows you to do is to practice looking at where you wanna go, smoothing out steering inputs, gas and brake. And it's something that they will do over and over again until you understand what you're doing. So I'm gonna give you a couple examples of what this might look like. Perfect. So as I come into the corner, you're gonna feel the car begin to spin out, right? So there's a couple steps that I'm taking to prevent that from occurring, right? Number one, anticipating or sensing the car beginning to oversteer, I'm steering into the skid. So what I'm trying to accomplish there is just getting the front end going the same direction as the back end of the car. At the same time, and equally as important, I'm looking where I want the car to go, ultimately. Not where the car is currently going, but where I want the car to go. And I think that is one of the major keys to car control and being able to manage this type of situation is not focusing on where the car is actually going. Third step, again, if my foot's on the brake, I need to get more traction on the rear tire. So coming out of the brake and or squeezing on the gas is gonna transfer weight. Now, this Dodge Daytona, V8 rear wheel drive, We've disabled the traction and stability system, so if I give it too much throttle, what's gonna happen? It'll loop the car. Exactly, it's gonna light up the tires and around we go. So you've gotta be very uh, diligent as far as <laughs> <laughs> applying throttle. <clears throat> if you hit the gas, we're going around. It's gotta be a fun ride, you know, cup and saucer style, but and then the third step, or the fourth step, excuse me, I've turned into it, I'm looking where I wanna go, I'm coming out of the brake, maybe applying some throttle, once the car stops skidding, it's taking that steering back out, getting the wheel straight again. Right? Understood. Give you one more demonstration here. Again, you can feel how slippery it is already. It's just like back home, right? <laughs> yeah, winter time. Blessed. Yep. So you hear me applying a little bit of throttle, but again, not much. A little brake, perhaps, to just manage your speed. that wheel straight again yeah <laughs> great right I feel like I might enjoy this <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I might not enjoy this <laughs> Now, right from the get-go, they tell you in order to have any type of success at a school, you have to be open to learning and doing things differently. And part of that is meshing well with an instructor and trusting them. So my name is Danny Bullock. I'm the Assistant Chief Instructor here at the Bondurant High Performance Driving School. So Danny has been at Bondurant for about 21 years. Oh, you haven't been here for 21 years, have you? I have been. Holy shit. Everybody's been here forever. Long time. That's amazing. For the time I've been here, I've had involvement in just about every department here at the school. And even to this day, still the most satisfying part is working with the students out on the track. You know, seeing them every day, seeing them improve, working to make them a better driver. That's honestly the, the most satisfying part to this. Uh, I used to teach before this job as well. And, and uh, so I still have that in me to uh, want to see that improvement with, with people. You know, they come to you, they don't necessarily know a skill or aren't that good at it at first, but then when they leave, they're much more proficient at it. And that's really a satisfying thing. Now, I, when I did some, this is by far the most comprehensive school I've ever seen. In terms of talent level, everybody here is amazing. And some of the lesser education that I've had in the past, they talked about that one of the things that stuck with me is the whole concept of consciously competent, unconsciously competent. Uh, and you get to that level where you're not thinking so much about what you're doing and you're just doing it and you're good at it. And I think that's a very hard place to reach. And when you come out here, I, I'm hearing what you're saying and the vision aspect. So I've been through some of the school here already. And some of 
the, your senses are so inundated, the sights, the sound, the heat today, of course. Yeah. And it, sometimes you're so caught up and like, oh my God, what am I supposed to be doing versus just looking, the most simple thing. Um, and I've, I, so would that be the biggest mistake that you've dealt with is just the, the vision aspect or are there other combinations of it? There's definitely other combinations and you kind of put it in a nutshell when you, when you think of it, it's, it's a lot of it's information overload. You know, you come here and there are a lot of things that we cover. Uh, your vision is just one small aspect of, of everything that we do here. And, uh, you know, there's you know, the car control aspects, uh, vehicle communication skills that we're teaching. And, and then we, we take you from one exercise to the next. And we do a, a very in-depth uh, you know, regimen of, of drills to bring a driver up, right? So it, the vision is probably the most common thing that people could improve the most on, on a general broad spectrum. But you're kind of right when it comes to all the different things, the sights, the sounds, there's so many things going on. You, you're in the classroom and a car goes by and you're like, whoa, what car was that? How fast were they going? Yeah. You know, there's so much action here and it just seems like, you know, you're in this adult Disneyland and it's like, yeah. wow, there's all this cool stuff. And, and you know, sometimes you gotta say, okay, I just gotta, I gotta sit back and I gotta focus on, on the instructor. He's ta talking right now, I need to listen up. So for somebody that may potentially come here or just regular drivers that want to improve their skill, what would be like just one solid word of advice? Like maybe you don't have the money to come to Bondurant. So what would you recommend somebody do to maybe just become more calm or more aware or better driver? Get your eyes looking farther ahead and have a better sense of situational awareness. You have those two things there and that's a good start. When you come to the school, you learn those things in depth. But when you're outside the school, if you start learning about those things, start thinking about where you're looking and, and paying attention to the task at hand, which is operating a you know, three or four or 5,000 pound vehicle sometimes. And, and it, it could very easily turn into a, you know, a, a tool of destruction you know, if you're not driving properly, right? right? So uh, it, it, those are the big things. Pay attention, minimize distractions out on the road and focus on, on driving that vehicle. Keep your eyes looking ahead. Be aware of what other drivers are doing around you. So basically sit on the phone and text people or driving. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't ever do that. So Bondurant is not just about going fast. A lot of what you're trying to teach people is safety, things that you can take with you and go on the road and save somebody's life or your own. Um, and I think a lot of this is relevant to parents, potentially younger drivers that don't have a lot of skill level or no skill level. Um, now that electronics and cars have become so overhyped and marketed, we all have these safety nets when you know you go out and buy a new car. That's what every dealership is trying to pout. Oh, it does this. It's got 60 sensors, cameras. Do you think that learning how to drive is still going to be relevant given how the technology is pushing forward? I totally do. I believe 100% in getting trained uh, no matter how many technological advances these cars attain through the years. Uh, you know, if there's a failure, you want to be able to learn how to drive that car yourself. Just because a car has a system like traction control, if you go on the accelerator a little too aggressively and you start to spin the tires and that traction control kicks in and slows the wheels down a little bit, that's great. What happens if that's not in effect? If it's, uh, there's a fault and then you're on the gas and you're just spinning tires, you should know how to control that. I think many of us hit a wall with learning, not just driving, but with many things in life. And you may be self-taught, you may be formally trained, or in this case, you might even be a race car driver that needs additional help to take it to the next level to help break bad habits. And a lot of that is what this is about, having somebody that studies what you're doing in the passenger seat and can dissect all of that. So once you go through the basics, like classroom, your car control studies, they get you into heel-toe downshifting, how to shift a manual transmission, and get you comfortable with that. And even they put you in an automatic car, they start to teach you weight balance, how to kind of feel out the car, being more connected with the machine. And then they put you out on a course, let you have at it, and then they kind of bring you in and talk about the things that you're doing or not doing and how to improve it corner by corner. And this is where things get a lot more intense, specifically in the Hellcats if you're not used to this type of horsepower. What I want to work on as far as the heel and toe is uh, later. So rev it later and rev it less. Okay. So more of an endurance kind of mindset, right? The less I rev it, 
the less wear and tear on the engine, the more fuel I save, um, but more composed I am too. So I brake, clutch, shift, rev, release. Uh, and then do that tempo, take your time. We'll accelerate up. Still get to 55, 60. Okay, level off, hold on a second, hold it, hold it, hold it. Okay, we'll brake. Okay, now clutch, shift, rev, now release. Nice and smooth again. I'm trying to match the engine speed with the transmission. Exactly what I'm looking for. Am I for revving right there. too much or too little? Or no, it is going to be. You'll fine tune it. You'll know if the car lurches forward. It was too much. <laughs> if it uh, if it's not enough, you'll feel the rear end um, skip. Skip, right? Yeah. So it's kind of self diagnosis. Getting out of the way for us. <laughs> yeah. Wait till the three cone. Now a we'll brake, clutch, shift, rev. There you go. Usually we get the one cone as our turn in point, but we can to make this corner easier. <laughs> we'll go a little farther. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it won't be aggressive brake pressure, but it'll be like a medium brake pressure with that 5560. So brake, clutch, shift, rev, release, nice and smooth. I want to be released with the clutch before I turn in in case I do make a mistake. The car's more stable and composed while it's straight. Okay. So I'll accelerate up, both hands on the steering wheel, unless I'm making the shift. <laughs> there you go. Third, level off the speed, wait to the three cone, and we'll brake, clutch, shift, rev, release, perfect. And again, nothing wrong with a big rev, but it's always like, say, that advanced technique to do it a little bit lighter, a little bit later, a little bit um, softer, right? So it saves everything, if you can. Right? It's just one of those techniques you can work on as we progress. And, and anytime I'm working with somebody, if you're ever if you're ever having a difficult time with something, always go back to the basics. And I think that's pretty true for anything. Always go back to the basics. And that foundation starts with the mental part of it, being engaged mentally on that particular activity for 100% of the time that you're out there doing it, track, freeway, wherever, sure. right? But then the visual part of it. And until somebody rides with you, you might think you have good visual skills. You might, but when someone says, oh, you're a little bit behind, you need to be three to six seconds ahead of the vehicle, not one to two. And utilize the points of reference on the racetrack to help you manage that. But until someone rides with you and, and, and brings that out, you're just gonna continue doing the same thing over and over and over. That's the biggest thing people take away from here is establishing good visual skills. You know, your eyes tell your hands and feet what to do. Your hands and feet tell the car what to do. The car is just merely an extension of the driver behind the wheel. So if you're not ahead of the vehicle, how are you gonna give it the information that it needs to get there? Sure. Big common mistake people make when it comes to the visual part of it, is they target fixate. They're looking at where they're at instead of where they wanna be next. And again, that goes back to modifying our basic skills or modifying our visual skills as we go quicker because we're covering more distance in that shorter period of time. The other bad side of that too is we look at things that we don't wanna hit. You know, let's say a guy's driving a car through a corner and they're drifting it and they're looking at the only saguaro cactus in the neighborhood. <laughs> you being from snow country, you know where you're gonna end up, yeah. right? Because you've learned those types of things driving in that kind of environment. You're gonna end up in the cactus. But if you don't recognize that or realize that, right, you don't know, you're just going where you look. Yeah. And that's what we really focus on here, on the front side. Make sure you have good visual skills, and then from there, how you manage the car, the line you drive through the corner, kind of falls right into play. It's amazing how it works. And all of the people that I've worked with, that's the biggest thing that they, that I just need to share with them on the front side. Look, you're, you're just a little bit too far behind the car. Get ahead of the car with your eyes and you'll do a better job. Even professional race car drivers that have had a career at it. I've worked with them and rode in the car. I'm like, you're not looking far enough ahead. Adjust, be here, be here. And they do that and all of a sudden, whoa, this becomes so much easier managing the car. So what you're really trying to do is build up your skill level. 
and then you can get behind the wheel of their formula car. And some of this is about just building confidence to the point where you understand how a car works, you understand what you're doing, and the ability to adjust quickly to different vehicles. Even the same vehicle, you could put two side by side and one might have different tires, tire pressure might be off, brake pad wear might be different. So you have to understand kind of the underlying dynamics to how to drive. And then when you get behind the wheel, anything, you can just adjust. And that's something that is learned. It's something that requires seat time and of course instruction. So when you hop in one of the challengers or chargers here, you have the instructor kind of talking you through things. Then they send you out on your own because then you don't have that crutch. Then they do some lead follow work, which is extremely helpful to follow their line. But as soon as they disappear, you find you're making way more mistakes. So they give you the opportunity to make these mistakes and make the corrections that you need to. Oops. Uh... Then finally, when you get behind the wheel of the open wheel car, it's a totally different experience. This is what you work for here at Bondurant to get into the Formula Mazda. Of course, I'm on the Outlap here, and you know, incredibly, you put a lot of work in your driving, and you can start to appreciate and exploit a car like this. And it's not just, of course, it's not just this. It's any like high performance machine. They're gonna have very similar traits. Um, you know, and you have the the steering, which is just basically does whatever you want it to do. You have the braking, which is, there's no ABS, so you have to get used to, you know, not pushing the pedal too far and too hard or you'll lock up the wheels. I mean, but the, it's so enjoyable uh, getting behind the wheel of something like this where it's just straight up purity. But again, you know, this is the reward of putting in a lot of work in your driving is you can actually drive this and appreciate it. And once you're able to, it's never the same again. Is it just it spoils you there's no street car that feels like this and i know this is a feeder car this isn't some you know crazy crazy race car it's still affordable for the normal person but you really get to appreciate everything about it and your driving skills and now i'm ready you know i'm ready to go into pretty much any car after this within reason Of course it looks cool speeding around on a track. There's cultural significance to car ownership in many places. You have the status aspect, the social aspect, the cool factor of sports cars. But the reality is there's millions of cars on the road. And it's a safety risk by not knowing how to operate a vehicle properly. And a lot of this driver education comes down to the fact that most of our education systems are broken. When I was 16, I was being taught in driver's ed by my English teacher, and he used it as an excuse to go run his errands on his break. I was literally driving him to like Walmart and the pharmacy to pick up his stuff. And that was the level at which I started my driving career. And sadly, you know, it took me a long time to realize, look, this is a risk. And whether you're out as a teenager, if you're elderly, if you have a phobia of driving, a lot of this can be quelled by just getting professional instruction or just doing some research like watching this video. The main point is, like anything, it just requires some effort and getting help from the right source. We're all born with only so much twitch fiber. The faster your twitch fiber is, usually the more athletic you are, the longer your muscles are, the better. There's, there's just certain things that we're born with that kind of talent. But we've also seen guys that aren't born with that, that work really hard at it, they can get to the same level or close to that, right? So it's the same thing, like 
There's some people that can jump in a car, they have really good feel, they understand what's going on, they can just make it happen. You have to find out what works for you and if you recognize that you're struggling or you don't pick up on stuff as fast, if you go work at it harder, you can definitely close the gap and get there. And there's certain things you'll never close the gap completely, so you just have to work harder in other areas to make up the difference, but you can do that. You see it across all stuff in sports or you know, in business, there's people that do that. You know, they learn to be more business savvy or what they gotta do to, to adapt to be better in their industry. With the training facility that we have here, we can develop those basic skill sets. I mean, really develop them. So when people get into the car, they're not thinking about what they're doing. They're thinking about how the car is handling and how they can modify it to go faster. And, and that's, that's, a, that's a great thing. You can't duplicate this as a racetrack. But here at this training facility, we can do a real good job. Being if it's for, let's say, a, a new driver, teen driver, right? The skid car and the accident avoidance simulation, simulation drill. I believe everybody on the front side of their career should be in the, do those two, two things. And the world would be a safer place. But if you wanted to become a race car driver, you first have to, like you mentioned, you have to establish, spend the money on yourself. This is a great place to do it. So when real life comes into play, they're driving in the snow or driving in a rainy type situation, they'll just automatically take care of it because we give them an opportunity to do it so many times that it becomes muscle memory. But you know, the basic skills for, let's say you know, I'm teaching a race car driver one day and then I'm gonna teach Johnny. You know, and Johnny's mom doesn't want me to teach him how to drive through the corner the fastest way, but the basic skills if we drive through the corner that same way I teach a race car driver is the safer way. Just using some, vo just some different vocabulary and this is the safest way and, and this is how we take care of an accident type avoidance situation. We can use our same basic training area to teach that everyday person to be a better, safer driver for the street. Driving education and safety is becoming more and more overlooked and that's because most modern societies are so heavily focused on technology that saves us from ourselves or allows us to do other things instead of learning mundane tasks like driving. I get it. But here's the thing. There are millions and millions of cars and trucks on the road that still require manual input from us. And it's going to be that way in the short term and in the long term. So there's a safety element to getting proper instruction and there's also benefits and enjoyment that can come out of it. If you're an enthusiast like myself, I literally hit a wall. There's no more that I can learn on my own. I'd go to a track or an event and I just wasn't going any faster. And reaching out to professional instruction helped me to go to a different level that I could have never done. And what is that worth to me or to other people? Well, First off, if I would have just spent that money initially, I probably could have gotten a lot more out of the cars that I did own instead of constantly trying to upgrade my way into speed. And on the other part of it is, if you're a parent who has a teenager or a younger driver, what is a couple thousand dollars? Yes, I know it is extremely expensive. Bondurant is not cheap and they even said it. But the thing is, you can cut costs off the amount you're gonna spend on the car and invest in the safety, and that's something that's gonna carry on much longer than that vehicle will. So there's that pro and con for it, but I think the biggest thing is, my time at Bondurant was interesting. There's people that have been there for a long time since the inception of that business, and they've gone through a lot of changes. They've gone through business changes, some real crises, and they've come out and now there's light at the end of the tunnel and they're even more passionate about trying to help people learn, which is one of the reasons why I was out there and why I wanted to be involved in this. So a big thank you to Bondurant for letting us see, our, see their world, but also a huge thank you to the Patreons that help fund this and keep these projects going. Guys like Dan, who literally paid for a replacement camera that I broke at Bondurant, and guys like Steve, who just came out on their own to help film. Now there's a lot more content I couldn't pack into this project but I'm gonna be releasing standalone videos of the instructors telling their stories and about Bondurant. I'm also going to do a driver series talking about heel-toe downshifting, throttle, braking, steering, all the things that I've learned that will hopefully help you out and get you more interested in the driving part. 
It's not a replacement for professional instruction, but not all of us can afford that at this point in time. So hopefully that helps, and hopefully this video helps give you a broad overview on the world of driver's education. Thanks for watching. Savage geese, yet another notification. Do you know how rich I am? Are you not hearing me? We unfriend, we unsubscribe. Get it done. I'm rich. Why is this a problem? <laughs>